The city of Waukegan is replacing about 20,000 water meters with a new automated meter, which provide for an accurate, timely, and reliable reading without having to gain access to customers' properties. The new meters, which will be replaced at no cost to the customers, will be able to identify high water usage and potential leaks. In addition, customers will be able to access their water usage and account information conveniently online. The first thing you need to do is schedule an appointment with Professional Meters, Inc. to have your old meter replaced with a new automated meter reader, AMR for short. Look for a postcard in the mail with the call information or call 866-270-9629. PMI will arrive at your scheduled time to install your meter. They will arrive on a truck or a van with a PMI logo. The PMI installer will have on a shirt or a jacket with a PMI logo and will carry a PMI ID badge. Installers will also wear booties over their work boots to ensure they do not carry dirt, mud, or water into your home or business. The installation process should take less than 30 minutes. The installer would take a photo of the old meter to obtain a record of your final meter reading and the condition of the pipes and fittings. The next step is to turn off your shutoff valves located on your water meter line near the meter. Remove the old meter and install the new AMR meter. The transmitter, which transmits your water usage data to the city, will be placed on a convenient location near the meter. The installer would take a photo of the new meter once it's installed. And that's it. The PMI installer will make sure everything is cleaned up, collect his tools, and head on to the next installation. You may receive a follow-up visit from a PMI manager to ensure your satisfaction with the installation and to make a quality control check of the meter installation. For more information about the automated meter reading installation program, please visit www.waukeganil.gov. If you have any questions regarding the meter installation, contact PMI at 866-270-9629 or the City of Waukegan City Collector at 847-599-2997. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the um, City Council meeting for November 18, uh, 2015, November 16, 2015. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Present. Alderman Tempest. Present. Alderman May. Present. Alderman Valco. Here. Alderman Taylor. Present. Alderman Cunningham. Present. Alderman Zeger. Present. Alderman Moisio. Here. Alderman Villalobos. Present. Invocation Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Bishop Colburn. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for another city council meeting. We thank you for our mayor, for this, uh, all of us. We thank you for all our department heads. We thank you for our police department, our fire department. Tonight, we extend our prayer to those in France that sense this killing. When you said, for God so loved the world, all people for God's people. Pray these blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The only thing I'd like to say under Mayor's comments is um, I'd like uh, your prayers for the people in Paris who lost their lives to the uh, Muslim extremists. It was a tragedy, and unfortunately, we haven't seen the end of it. So I just pray for the people who lost their lives for unnecessarily. Um, audience time, Arthur Cobb. Good evening. Small Business Saturday is the day we celebrate the Shop Small movement to drive shoppers to local merchants across the U.S. This year, 
Small Business Saturday will be November 28th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in downtown Waukegan. We encourage shoppers to start their day at Urban Edge, located at 220 West Clayton Street, where they can enjoy free coffee and donuts provided by Waukegan Main Street, as well as pick up their shopping pass. Throughout the day, shoppers can get their passes stamped and initialed by participating businesses. After visiting five businesses, the shoppers the shopper is eligible to enter a drawing for a $50 gift certificate. The day concludes with Main Street awarding the gift certificate and Christmas tree lighting at Jack Benny Plaza. Mayor Motley and Alterman Villa Lobos will be our guests, uh, special guests. Uh, for more information, please call the Waukegan Main Street office at 847-623 6650. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Ralph, Ralph Peterson. Hello, everybody. I would like to start out by saying we have a good city, but what we have is bad leadership. And I'm going to face you the audience and the viewing public because the mayor never answers me or talk to me, so why even look at him? Here sits a retired cop, was once a city clerk, now he's our mayor. And there's been a culture of beatings and killings. And he wants to give us the impression he knows nothing about it. I ask you, mayor, do you have any plans on commenting in the press. We're waiting on you. You're our leader. We're waiting to hear you give us a comment in the press. So far, you've set mute. And I really, and I don't think that's right. We need to hear what your plans are. After speaking with courageous, truthful news reporter Dan Hinkle, I come to find out, listen to this audience, none of the mayors will comment on police abuse or false convictions. They will not comment, and they're our leaders. We're supposed to follow them. They're leading the city. Me personally, and this is how Ralph Peterson feels, I feel Mayor Motley is one of the good old boys. Now, I'll tell you why I say that, and I can prove it. He pals around with Waller in the likes, and everybody in the city knows Waller soiled this county. He, taught, he cost the taxpayers millions, and there's no way on God's green earth this man should be involved in local government. And Mayor, you know it. And it really hurt my feelings to find out. Mayor, you actually called. Now, this lets me know he's part of the good old boy network. He actually called Dr. Rudd and told him he was wrong for telling the truth. And I'll give you a chance to say it right now. Am I speaking the truth? You actually told him he was wrong for speaking the truth. Then you went about town. You Do are not a interrupt liar. Me. Do not interrupt me, and I'll prove it. I'm glad you said that. I'll prove it next time while I'm here. Then you went around town telling people that your Lake County coroner was crazy. That's a lie, too? OK, well, we'll see next time, then, because I, anything I say, I can back it up. And I would like to say, by you surrounding yourself with these 20, with these 2015 uh, African American Pharisees, it ain't gonna work. They're not leaders, they're preachers that you pumped up in the press that's gonna follow whatever you tell them to do. They're not leaders, they're your puppets. And shame on you, I'll say again, there's no way Thank Waller you, should be involved Thank in you. government. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Clyde McLemore. Run to start. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I, I, re, I rise to speak to you out of concern which keep repeating itself. For the better part of your police career, 
of service of 26 years you worked and even supervised an officer by the name of Michael P. Donnerworth, who retired on April 8, 2011 of 30 years of service. On September 10, 2015, approximately 6 to 8 o'clock p.m., Mr. Donnerworth was very intoxicated, went to the Genesee Theater, ordered a double shot, when staff requested $18 for payment, Mr. Donaldsworth went off and cursed the staff out management and their prices was too high, told the manager he was a retired Waukegan police officer and a deputy coroner. Mr. Donaldsworth was, uh, sent someone to the liquor store, bought a couple of cases of beer, stood outside the theater selling beer for $2 a can. The manager came to speak to the mayor about this incident and your response was, boys will be boys. After seeing you wasn't going to do nothing, she filed a complaint with the coroner's office. After a full investigation, Mr. Donaldworth was terminated. I have Mr. Donaldworth's personal files right here. Goes back to the article in the Chicago Tribune as Waukegan being a scary place to live for blacks and Latinos. My question to you, Mr. Mayor, had this been a black officer, would it be boys be boys? How do you justify your comment? More important, how do you expect to request your leader, how, how do you expect us to respect your leadership and those you appoint to leadership? I'd like to read from the file, which I for you, and I got the file, because see, y'all always say we don't come in here with the correct stuff. And this is uh, page two of Mr. Donaldworth's file, and it states right here why he was fired from the coroner's office. But we could go further and get to the, uh, the investigation. Wait a minute, I need page two. The, the, just hit it. The investigation uh, on September 10, 2015, Deputy Donaldsworth had an incident of public intoxication, which led to a complaint being made to the coroner's office. The coroner investigated the incident and engaged in administration proceeding, which, after a judification by the coroner, led to the termination of Deputy Donaldsworth's position as deputy coroner. This investigation records consider by corner Rudd, as Thank which you, he Mackley. replied upon as part of his Thank you. Yeah, I know it's the end of my, my time, but my question to you, what you gonna do? This he, is, he doesn't work for me, Good sir. old boy guy. Uh, Mary Reese. I'm here tonight to let the city know that I did receive my letter back from the federal government and I'm wondering when the city will take care of my home and I'm kind of sad and hurt that my Alterman didn't see that much wrong with my home when the government agreed that there's quite a bit that's wrong with it. Are you done ma'am? Thank you. Chris Blanks, Mr. Chris Blanks. This is from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the investigative report from Ms. Reese's home. Um, a rehabilitation change order form submitted by the city and dated October the 27, 2014, removes the cost of the living room flooring and lists the reasons for the change as homeowner no longer wants. However, Ms. Reese is not a party to the change order, and there is no documentation sustaining her acknowledgement of the change or that she did in fact state that she would hire a separate contractor to fix the flooring. This is in direct violation of the rehabilitation signed August 18, 2014. While the city of Waukegan submitted a Waukegan Housing Rehab Program Homeowners Acceptance Form signed by Ms. Mary Reese on October the 27, 2014. This form in and of itself is not sufficient to document acceptance given, given the number of documented issues with the installation of the flooring and the conflicting accounts as to the efforts made to solve the complaint. 
Finally, uh, to, to file the complaint. As a result, HUD requested the city of Waukegan work with Ms. Reese to address her concerns and submit documentation to HUD that the issue has been resolved within 30 days of the date of this letter. Finally, the city, the city does not, the city does not document in any way, once again, does not document in any way that the work performed met the specification of the rehabilitation scope of work or that the work performed was acceptable. As a result, HUD requests the City of Waukegan work with Ms. Reese to address these issues and provide HUD with documentation of their amelioration within 30 days of the date of this letter. The problem that we are having here with uh, what uh, Mr. Peterson brought up and Clyde and what I'm bringing here, we have a problem in this city with what I consider as misuse and abuse of police and political power. This is a misuse. This lady, 71, well, I ain't gonna, well this, it's okay. <laughs> so anyway, as a senior citizen of this city, there's no way this should have had to happen to her. And what is the problem here is they addressed the stats, but the way she was spoke to, the human side of it, as to where Mr. Uh, Eze, Reverend Ezell Robinson tells her daughter to tell your mother to stop crying because we're not going to do anything else. Mayor, you all have a responsibility to the community. Uh, accountability store at top down, and there needs to be an investigation. Mr. Ezell Robinson stood here and told you all that Thank he you. You, thought Blank. that he didn't do anything wrong. If that's the case, you need to go and look Thank through you, all Mr. those Blank. reports for the last two years and find out if any other citizen been treated like her. Uh, minutes. <laughs> Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman May to approve the regular meeting minutes of and the executive session minutes uh -huh. of November 3rd, November 2nd, 2015. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Resolution proclamations, appointments. Uh, tonight I sent all of you a, a resume uh, from Hector Hugo Rodriguez. I will be appointing him to the Civil Service Commission. I sent uh, all of you a resume via email. I hope everyone got it, read it. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, will you please come forward and take the podium? I chose Mr. Rodriguez um, because of his dedication and commitment to the city of Waukegan. He's very involved in the Hispanic community. I have sworn to make sure that the Civil Service Commission conduct itself uh, justly and fairly. I have appointed one ethnic person from each group. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez is a good man. He's dedicated to the city. Uh, anyone have any questions of Mr. Rodriguez? He's present. Any questions? Uh, Your Honor, the Civil Service, how many are on, is on the board? There are three. Then who's leaving? Uh, the, the female left. She le doesn't live in the city. By state, by state standards, she has to live in the city of Waukegan. She resigned uh, a month ago. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get caught up. I, I know the, the three there, it was three on there already. Do um, you want mind naming them, Your Honor? Pastor so? Francis. Okay. Uh, Carrie B. Gay. Right, that's one. And um, yeah. now it's going to be Mr. Rodriguez, right? Correct. Well, Andy Rivera was the third. Andy's an attorney. Okay. And he moved out of the city, um, and when she left the city, um, she resigned her position. All right, no problem. I mean, I, I, I knew it was three. Yeah, that's what I it was. was. Okay, I didn't know if you were expanding it. No, or anything just like three. That. Okay. Mr. Rodriguez, anything you'd like to say? Well, I'm, I'm very thankful for this opportunity to serve, and um, I hope to do uh, a uh, good job with the responsibilities that I, that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any Thank questions? You. If not, sir, you may sit down. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, the next is item B: Leadership Awards presented in the to the members of the Waukegan to College Envision Group. Is there someone? Would you like to make a comment, ma'am? Your name? 
Good mm -hmm. evening. My name is Elise Dankers, and I'm the executive director with Waukegan to College. We're very honored to be with you this evening to uh, recognize our Envision Corps. Uh, the Envision Corps are the students at, within Waukegan to College who are I seniors in high school and above. And this evening we have a number of uh, our seniors with us who have worked very hard in school, have a great academic track record as well as a track record of leadership and community service. So we see them as leaders today in their school and also leaders of tomorrow for Waukegan. And uh, I, I am really pleased that we could uh, have them with us this evening. Um, just a bit of background, Waukegan to College, for anyone who may not know, is a college readiness program that's been around since 2009. Um, we've grown from 25 students back then up to 130 students now, about 50 of whom are actually in college. We have five college graduates. Um, and we are a, a lean and hopefully not too mean uh, staff of uh, four, four folks. Uh, we operate out of Christ Church. They're very generous to, to give us space. Uh, we have a core of 100 volunteers from Waukegan and all around the county who come in and do volunteer work as tutors and mentors and um, bring a lot of um, great resources into the city. Uh, we have a strong core of parent leaders who are very active in uh, community service as well as uh, organizing and doing fundraising for our own organization. So um, again, we're uh, pleased to be uh, doing this work here in Waukegan. We've seen all of our, our students in the program graduate from high school and go on to college and um, hope to keep that uh, track record up. I know this group will not let us down and, and they're well on their way. So, Would you like you. to bring the young men, yeah. women and men up and uh, we'll give them a certificate? <laughs> Uh, Mayor, can I just make a comment really quick? Uh, go ahead, Alderman, Alderman Villalobos. Uh, I just want to say uh, it's great to see all these students here. Um, I had the privilege of volunteering uh, with Paul Keegan at college uh, for a semester during, I think, their first or second year. And it's great. I'm so happy to see them grow and to have some college graduates already. Um, for you students who are recognized today, um, I'll offer this as I offer to most students I talk to. Talk to me and you can use me as a reference and a recommendation. Um, I just need to know who you are as a person, know what you're involved with. Um, for Angie Jose right there sitting next to you, I'm doing that for her. I know Angie. 
I know her sister, they volunteered at the library, and they're stellar people, so I imagine you're much the same as, as she is. Um, so congratulations to you. A public Works Committee, Alderman Newsom, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Public Works Committee met this evening. Uh, item A on the agenda. Public Works Committee recommends, and I so move, that we authorize the proper city officials to enter into a custodial water main agreement for the property commonly known as Next Patrol Associates, LLC, for lots one, two, and three of the Bluestone development. And I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Mozio. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Item B. Public Works Committee recommends that we authorize the proper city officials to enter into a custodial sanitary sewer agreement for the property commonly known as Next Patrol Associates, LLC, for lots one, two, and three of the Bluestone development, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Item C. Public Works Committee recommends that we authorize the proper city officials to enter into a custodial water main agreement for the property commonly known as North States Bank for lot four of Bluestone Development, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Item D, Public Work, the Public Works Committee recommends that we authorize the proper city officials to enter into a custodial sanitary sewer agreement for the property commonly known as North States Bank for lot four of the Bluestone development, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Item E, Public Works Committee recommends that we authorize the proper city officials to waive the competitive bid requirement per city code section 2458I7 based on a good faith recommendation by the Director of Public Works due to proper experience of specific projects by and work already completed by Mississippi Valley Pump to complete the repair of sanitary lift station pumps for an amount not to exceed $26,381. Funding from 555-916027691. And I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Moisio. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Uh, we're going to vote aye, but Your Honor, we're only, we're, the only reason we're doing it is because Mississippi Valley Pump is already started and everything, right? Right. That's yeah, right. I, I like that. I like for that to be said versus waiving bid procedure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in according to that section of the city code, Alderman, that's cited in the motion, that is the proper language. Waive a okay. uh, good faith requirement. Okay. All right. Just, just for our public to understand, it's what mm -hmm. we're doing. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Thank you, Ann. Item F. Public Works, uh, Public Works Committee recommends that we authorize the proper city officials to enter a change order relative to the contract approved by City Council on May 4th, 2015, by and between the city and Kayanta for an amount not to exceed $30,000 for the water meter extract for PMI Data Interface Solution. Funding from line item 555-916027693. And I so move. Motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Moisio. Your, Your Honor, can we'll we have some discussion on that? Yes, what's, you, yes what's, you may, what, Alderman. What's going on here? Kayanta? It's with the uh, information George, with the, the new it's for the, water meters. For the, the new reading. system for the night change orders. Yes, what it is, it's a, uh, Cayenta is our software program for building water in order for them to release some data to PMI for the transition of automatic meter reading. 
we have, we have to use them because that is our servers for that. So it is a change order to incorporate that expense to this program, to this project. So basically, Cayenta is charging us to give the, the data over to them. Correct. And, and, and there's no way around, George? Um, there's no, nothing no. that we can generate? No. No, this that's is something the system that's, we use. Because we're on the contract with right. them. That's in it. Correct. And they have the software program for that. It's one of those license problems, isn't it? Why would we do it before? Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, Your Honor. Is that it? Yeah. Did you vote? Roll call. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. That is all, yeah. Old business item A, adopt an ordinance providing for the issuance of a not to exceed $6 million general obligation bonds taxable series 2015C of the City of Waukegan, Lake County, Illinois to finance the acquisition of certain real estate within the city, walk, city of the city and for the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on said bonds tabled on November 2nd, 2015. Um, I spoke to all of you. I withdrew our bid to purchase this property. I will not be purchasing this property. It will be purchased by National Gypsum. Uh, we are out of the race. They were bidders with us. They now have exclusive rights to that site. Um, I would like to bring this back on the table. I'll make a motion to bring it back on the table. Your Honor, I'll second that motion only to put it back on the table. Okay. No. You know my position. I've called and talked to every one of you. At this time, I will call for a motion to accept as presented. Oh, a vote to put it on a roll call, please, uh, Maria. Alderman put it Newsom. back on the table. Put it back on the table. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Your Honor, if I may speak on this, if I may speak on this. This is just a procedural vote to put, yes. it, put it back, back on, the, on table. the table. And then we'll do the other. Then we can vote on it. Yes. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Belko. Okay. Sir, point of order, it's not to put it back on the table, it's to take it off the table. Take it off the table. <laughs> That's okay. correct. Take it off. And I vote aye on that thing. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Take it off the table. Alderman Seeger? Aye. 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 Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. So now. Okay, the, now is, if someone does, makes a motion, we'll proceed. If not, it's dead, it's gone, it will not be heard again. So if someone would like to make a motion, fine. If not, this, this matter is over. Is there a motion? If not, dies for lack of a motion. Uh, next item of business reports and communication. Uh, Alderman Valco, please. Uh, I'm going to defer to uh, the Director of Finance, sir, the uh, lengthy financial reports. Ms. Migelski. Good evening. Sorry. Um, he, I'm here tonight to present the comprehensive annual financial report um, for the fiscal year ending April 30th, 2015. This is the document here. Um, you should have all received this in your packets last time, so I apologize for that, that we're on a bit of a delay. Um, what I'm going to present tonight is really just an overview. It's a very comprehensive document. Um, so if you have any questions tonight or any, at any point, feel free to ask me. Um, and I should note that the CAFR for this year as well as previous years is posted on our website and available for download. It's a searchable document this year, which we're happy about. Um, and it is, uh, a lot of this data is summarized and also available on the Illinois Comptroller's website under what they call the Annual Financial Report or AFR. 
section of the State Comptroller's Office where you can compare Waukegan data to other municipalities. So those are two pretty good online resources. So, uh, so Baker Tilly is our independent auditor. They were here uh, two weeks ago at Finance Committee. Uh, Jason Coyle, who the Finance Committee got an opportunity to hear from, is the partner who handles our audit. Um, I would like to thank the city staff as well as Baker Tilly for all the hours that are spent completing this, temp this technical report. Um, the auditors work within governmental auditing standards and they provide reasonable assurance that our financial statements are free of material misstatement. Um, sometimes people think an auditor's opinion means that you're performing well financially. What they're opining on is whether or not your financial statements are accurately and fairly presented. And for that, we did receive a clean opinion um, for in that regard. So an overview of our financial statements. Uh, the basic financial statements are comprised of citywide financial statements, then fund financial statements that are more specific. There's notes to the statements, which are many, many pages, and supplementary information. Due to this evening's time constraints, I'll just focus on the citywide financial statements and our two largest individual funds, the general fund and the water fund. Um, if any of the aldermen would like a private viewing, I can go through the whole document. Happy to do that. Um, so the governmental activities are supported by taxes and intergovernmental revenues. This includes our public safety, public works, economic development, pretty much our general fund, special revenue funds all combined. So our governmental activity statement of net assets is what in the private sector you would call a balance sheet. Um, and this presents the city's assets and liabilities and the difference when you subtract the liabilities from the assets is our net assets or in the private sector would be called stockholders equity. So our governmental assets told an increase by 500,000 and our liabilities remained unchanged from the prior fiscal year. So when our 157 million in liabilities are subtracted from our 182 million in assets, the net amount is 25 million. And that's what that little sliver is there. That's our net assets. When you break that down, which is this chart here of the net assets, uh, 36 million is capital assets net of debt, um, and 14.7 million is restricted assets. So some of the restricted assets would be cash set aside and escrows for debt service payments, things like that. Our unrestricted net assets is 25.4 million in the red, and that's as of April 30th, 2015. So while that is a concern that we have a negative net asset in our governmental fund. Um, it has improved over the prior years. Thank you. Uh, the governmental activities revenues increased 3.3 million to 93 million versus the prior year for a total of 89.7 million. Our expenses also increased by 6.4 million to 93 versus the prior year of 86.6. .6. Uh, we ended the fiscal year with no surplus surplus or deficit before transfer, so we finished even. Our charges for services increased 8%, and this is mostly due to the large uptick in building permits. Uh, we had a lot of commercial construction during the year. Operating grants and contributions decreased by 26%, and this is most attributed to the COPS grant, uh, the federal grant we received for police officers expiring during the fiscal year. Uh, taxes, our largest source of, uh, of revenues in this area, increased by 4%. 2.2 million was due to an increase in our property tax collections in this particular bucket of money. Also, the implementation of the 0.25% increase in home rule sales tax. We did receive the benefit of that starting in January, and the fiscal year ends in April. And then better than expected collections in local use and utility. Intergovernmental revenues and investment income remained unchanged versus the prior year, and miscellaneous revenue increased, um, and that was due to things like uh, sale of scrap metal, um, past due accounts, aged insurance claims, and things of that nature. The total governmental activities expenditures increased by 6.4 million or 7%. Sanitation and environment was the only area that had reduced expenditures, and this was due to the city actively identifying vacant residences um, and thus reducing our monthly bill that we pay to our outsourced refuse collection company. The largest increase came um, in the area of public safety spending, which went up by $3.8 million, and that is attributed to pension obligations, 
workers' compensation claims, and general liability costs in that area. In addition, the costs associated with personnel, uh, citywide commodity and utility costs increased with the overall uh, con contractual increases in those contracts. Oh, George, you went way ahead of me. Can you go back to uh, governmental activities, excess and deficit? I know this stuff's not fun, but <laughs> just let me get in the record. Um, this is our excess versus deficit in the governmental activities. So you can see after transfers to reimburse services to the enterprise fund, uh, we resulted in a net position of a half a million dollars to the positive. So uh, we ended the year um, completely even before transfers, received half a million dollars in to re reimburse the general fund for services provided to water. So we ended up with a, a surplus of half a million dollars. All right, so the general fund, that's our largest fund. Um, and here we have the revenues, uh, budget versus actual, and then same on expenses. And I won't go into too much detail on this. There's a lot of uh, written up in the document on what occurred here. Uh, but our revenues did better than we had budgeted. A large reason for that, which I already discussed, was the building permits. Um, we've had some large projects, especially downtown, that we had much better than we had expected. Our fines and forfeitures exceeded budget as well, as some of our red light intersections came back up during the year. We did not have those budgeted to be back online. Um, and then our charges for services outpaced the budget, and that was due to an increase in ambulance fee collections and also improved fire alarm subscription service. Um, our general fund expenses came right in on budget, almost to the dollar. Um, so we ended at 61 million. Budgetary resources did have to be reallocated, however, between departments, um, central services, public safety, fire, and building and zoning all had savings, as well as sanitation. So we were able to take budgetary um, savings from central services, the fire department, building and zoning, uh, to cover overages in other areas. Where we actually went over was in the area of um, police and public works, as well as economic development. Both police and public works had overruns due to overtime and worker compensation claims. Um, and the payments related to some of the sales tax rebate agreements that were entered into last year weren't in the budget when we started the fiscal year. So we had to transfer funds uh, to make those payments as well as some consultants that were hired midway through the fiscal year that weren't originally in the budget plan. Um, so overall, we ended up with a $4.8 million surplus in the general fund, which is good news on that. Um, the rainy day fund is combined. The stabilization fund is combined with the general fund for financial reporting services. So we did forgive a loan to ourselves. The city council had approved this when we adopted the stabilization fund policy a couple of years ago. As you may recall, we had a large loan from our stabilization fund to our safety and risk fund. Um, and since we finally had two years of a surplus, we forgave that loan to ourselves, which essentially ate up that surplus. Okay. So um, here's our general fund excess or um, surplus versus deficit. And as you can see, um, since 2011, the past 15 fiscal years, 11 of those have ended with a general fund deficit. You know, and that's going from 2002 up through 2010, and then again in 12 and 13. Um, so the fact that we ended the last two fiscal years with an operating surplus in the general fund is a very good sign. Um, I already talked about how we use some of that to repay our rainy day fund loan or forgive those loans. Um, so this just shows that using our budgetary controls and the departments being you know, conservative in their spending and hiring is starting to pay off. So our business type activities is our water sewer department as well as our motor vehicle enterprise fund. Next slide, please. So similar to governmental assets, this is our business type, um, net assets or the balance sheet. Our total assets actually decreased by 1.3 million from the prior year and our liabilities stayed the same. So when you subtract the liabilities from the assets, our net assets are 66.2 million and that's broken down here in the box to, the, to your right. Um, this is 53.5 million in capital assets and 12.7 in unrestricted assets. So unlike governmental activities, we actually have a, a positive with our net assets in this fund. We do not have any restricted assets in this fund at this time. 
Our business type activity revenues increased by uh, increased to 13.6 million. Um, this is mostly attributed to the May 1st increase in water and sewer rates. Expenses also increased by 3.8 million to 13.8, and the largest contributor was writing down previously recognized water and parking enterprise items that after visiting some of those with the auditors, we decided they were misclassified. Um, specifically, we had some parking lots that were recorded um, as assets, and really only the land should have been the asset, not the asphalt on top. It had not, they had not been depreciated as they should have been. So that's really the largest expense. It was a one-time correction. <clears throat> so our expenses uh, did, uh, did increase over the revenues, and we did do a transfer out to repay the general fund for services. So the net position decreased by $700,000 for the fiscal year. Again, it's still a positive of $66.2 million in that area. As far as budget goes, revenues finished 9% under the budget projections for a total of $12.6 million. Uh, we did not budget the water and sewer collections conservatively enough to account for the decreased consumption billed to customers during the fiscal year. Um, this is something that you know we'll work more diligently on going forward. Water and sewer expenses finished under budget as well by 6.5 million, which is a positive variance of 40%. Um, however, this is really due to the fact that we budget on a cash basis, and then at the end of the fiscal year, we. Um, reverse the expenses of capital projects to amortize them over the life of the useful uh, asset, uh, the life of that asset. So the fund did generate operating income of 2.8 million. Um, again, after the write down of misclassified capital assets, we only ended up with a deficit of $800,000 if you take that write off out of there. So on to our long term investments and obligations. If there's any questions, you guys can stop me. No? Okay. Uh, capital assets, net of depreciation. Our total capital assets decreased by $8.9 million from last fiscal year to the current fiscal year. This reflects two things. One, we did write down some assets that I had already discussed, but also our annual depreciation expense is actually outpacing the investments we're making on an annual basis. Um, so you can see we do break it down by business type and governmental. We have made some strides in that regard. We did do the water sewer bonds a couple of years ago, have been making improvements to our water plant. We will be seeing a little uptick in that as we make the roadway improvements. Um, but this trend is something that to be cognizant of as we move forward. You don't want to see the value of your capital assets declining annually. Long-term debt. Um, our general obligation debt is the debt that's supported by property taxes, and it decreased as of April 30th by 5.9 million to a total of 65.9. Our ratio of general obligation bonded debt to equalize assessed valuation is a good indicator um, that you can kind of look at every year. As of April 30th, it was 6.75%, which was an increase from the prior year of 6.51. So that what that ratio talks about is even though our geo debt overall went down, and you would think that ratio would improve because EAV went down, the ratio actually went up. Um, another measure of geo debt is per capita. Our geo debt as of April 30th was $741 per capita for the city, which is actually the lowest per capita amount since 2009. So in that area, we've made improvement. For our revenue debt, uh, the revenues, revenue debt are bonds that are supported by something other than property taxes. We have bonds that are supported by parking fees, sales tax, also water, and we have a special assessment on the Fountain Square area. No new bonds were added to this during the fiscal year, and we have more than sufficient coverage to meet these obligations. So our debt is at 16 million, or 16.1 million in this area. Uh, pension obligations. This will be the last year that we report um, these, these particular statistics. The Finance Committee um, had our, our actuary, MWM Consulting, came out and explained how we're transitioning from one governmental accounting standard pronouncement to another. So this will be the last year that you see annual pension cost. Um, but you know, I figured I would share it with you since this is the last year. Um, as of April 30th, the city had made 94%, 96%, 
and 94% of its annual pension cost contributions to Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, Police Pension, and Fire Pension Funds, respectively. As of April 30th, 2015, the total is $20 million for all three funds of net pension obligation. And again, as we discussed, this will change dramatically as we move to a new um, accounting standard next year. Other post-employment benefits by statute, uh, the city in Illinois, uh, cities are required to allow retirees to, to continue on the city's health insurance plan when they retire, um, even though that is not the city doesn't subsidize that by paying the premiums for the retirees. There's what's called an implicit cost of allowing this particular group to continue on your plan after retirement. So we do have to calculate that implicit cost and report it in our financial statements. Um, for police and firemen that are determined to have a, have a catastrophic injury, they are given um, health insurance benefits for themselves and their families for life, and the, that cost also has to be projected and recorded. Um, and that's what we're reporting to you here. As you can see, the annual required contributions, what we're actually contributing is the cost of the premium as we see it from Blue Cross Blue Shield. We have not been making anything toward that implied contribution. This is not uncommon for municipalities. It's a rather new concept that started in 2011. Um, but right now, based on this actuarial calculation, we are 51% funded for retiree health uh, insurance obligations. You'll note that's an improvement. Over the prior year, we were 53%, and that is due in large part to removing the actual city paid contribution that was being made toward the retiree health insurance last year. So that is the main parts of the CAFR that I uh, summarized for you tonight. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions? Yes. Our, to Tempest? our total debt is it about 90 million for the city. When you combine the two revenue and geo together? Combine everything. What's our if, if you're talking just about bonded debt, yes, well, not including know. pension obligations. You know, I would like to see us out of debt completely. Yeah. I really would. That's my dream. Right. Uh, something we need to work toward, I believe. We can't continue just adding debt. I'm never happy. But I think we we're managing very well. Your team and the mayor, i got to compliment you both for managing what we have. But I sure would like to work to get it down to nothing if I can. I finally paid my house off. We got to pay our debts off here. Hey, Tina, the um, the amount of debt that we have versus the EAV. Can you kind of explain how that works, and uh, from for our city, and maybe how uh, in comparison with other other cities? Sure. Uh, so we can put. So I think I think the public. They understand debt, but I don't think they understand what does that truly mean and when it comes to you. I know you talk about bond rating and how the significant that is when we go out and we want to do capital improvement projects in the future. Right. So EAV is the equalized assessed valuation. That's essentially one-third of market value for the entire city. So if you take all of the value of all of the real estate in the city of Waukegan and you divide it by a third, that's what's called equalized assessed valuation. And that's the number that's used by the county to calculate tax rates and a variety of other um, calculations. So what we do is we take the amount of principal outstanding at a certain date as the numerator and divide that by the EAV to obtain that ratio. Non-home rule municipalities actually have a cap on that. I think it's 6.25 percent, but I'm not exactly sure, um, that they cannot exceed. They can't go over that amount without referendum. So that's kind of a good measure to see where you know you are um, for a municipality of our size um, compared to say take a park city so you know five million dollars in bonds to them might not sound a lot like a lot but if you take it by their EAV you would get a ratio so you can make those comparisons okay okay Got your spark. anyone else Mayor, could and, this be formally accepted into the record? Yes. Um, motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Cunningham to be accepted. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Thank you. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Migalski. Uh, next item is new business. Item A, approval of payroll data November 13th, 
2015 in the amount of $1,405,438.46. I A F F on call compensation dated 10 13 15 in the amount of um, $2,469.93. PBLC holiday buyout dated 11 13 15 in the amount of $27,152.78. And final payoffs dated 11 13 15 in the amount of $4,522.44. And final payouts dated 11 13, 13 uh, 15 in the amount of $7,318.74. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Cunningham. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Zeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Item B, approval of bills dated November 16, 2015, in the amount of $10,504,553.87. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Cunningham. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Alderman Valco? Aye, sir. Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Aye. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I, I missed some, some things under reports. Uh, I missed item uh, B. I'll read this into the report. Uh, Waukegan Fire Pension Fund actuarial variation report number, report as May 1, 2015 for the year ending April 30th, 2016 per 40 ILCS 5-3. Uh, the next one C is Waukegan Police Pension Fund actuarial variation report as May 1, 2015 for the year ending April 30th, 2016 per 40 ILCS Five slash three, and the last one is City of Waukegan officials estimate the aggregate levy to be twenty-one million for the 2015 tax year per thirty-five ILS two hundred dash eighteen three or twenty-one point eight twenty-one point eight million. Uh, motion to accept by Alderman Valco, seconded by Alderman Cunningham. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Uh, next is item C, approval of raffle sale application for the following uh, organizations, Thursday night, <coughs> Mixers Moon, Moonlight Ladies, uh, Progressive Bowling, <laughs> and Sunday Note Mixed Bowling League. Motion by Alderman Villalobos, second by Alderman May. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. IMD approval of the October 2015 monthly treasury report. Mayor, I just want to let you know that uh, I didn't pass out the copies. Uh, I'm remiss. Anybody, that, any alderman that wants a copy, I have it here after the meeting. Thank you. Those. Thank you. Um, motion by Alderman Zegar, second by Alderman Taylor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item E, authorize the proper city official to award a contract to Sugrade LLC via the HGAC, a cooperative purchasing program, a local government uh, procurement service for the purchase of one Seagrin model TB50C0 Marauder 2 custom 1500 GPM plumber engine for the amount not to exceed $486,363 funded from this line item 307-1307 24489. Motion by Alderman Moisio, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Taylor? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Seeger? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Villalobos? Aye. Uh, item F, approval of resolution for the use of the Amstutz Expressway, including closing of same from Genesee Street to Greenwood Avenue for the Park Pictures a Car Commercial on December 7, 2015 from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. This event is sponsored by the Park Pictures LLC and has been approved by the Outdoor Special Events Board. Park Pictures LLC will pay in advance all costs associated with this road closing per the Outdoor Special Event Ordinance and has provided the city with full indemnification. 
Motion by Alderman Tempest, seconded by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Zeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Ordinance Aye. and resolutions. Ordinance, no parking any time. Restriction on Genesee Street north of Julian Street to revise to extend the restriction from all north curb line of Julian Street to a point 375 feet north. Motion by Alderman Villalobos, second by Alderman Taylor. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Velko. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman time, Madam Clerk. Alderman Newsom. Yes. Alderman Tempest. Yes, uh, when we were voting on the new business in regards to the fire, I believe the the, uh, pro, the uh, menu here says it should read $486,363. Instead on your folder has three more zeros. Oh, I'm sorry. I said it correctly, yeah. Did we get it right? Yeah, it's written in correctly. Okay, okay. okay. thank okay. you. Uh, thank you. That's all. Alderman Valco. I'm sorry, Alderman May. Thanks. Um, I just want to uh, give thanks to the community that came out for our three public meetings regarding the lakefront for our uh, planning grant that we've been working on here at the city. Um, at the next meeting, I believe, we'll have a presentation of the draft plan. Uh, the, the plan will be published on the city web, website as, long, as well as the planning and zoning website sometime around Thanksgiving and will be open for further public comment, I think for about two or three weeks. So just want to give you the heads up, we will publish it on the city Facebook page and you can look at my alderman's page as well. But I just wanted to say thank you so much to the community for coming out big for all three meetings. Um, we really appreciate your encouragement and your input as we move forward on lakefront development. Thank you. Alderman Belko. No comment this evening. Alderman Taylor. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, by the time this airs, um, we will be close to Thanksgiving and I wanna make sure everybody takes some time to enjoy your family. You know, life goes by fast. We saw with the Paris yeah. tragedy, you just never know. Please hug your family, take this, celebration and enjoy each other. Secondly, I would like to see the aldermen take no more than three minutes during alderman time since we are doing the same thing to our citizens and timing them. I think it would be fair for us to limit our time to three minutes. Um, would the aldermen be willing to do that? I'd like to make a motion. I second it. Can we take a vote on it? Um, not on the agenda. You can suggest it for the next agenda, okay. Alderman, but it's not on tonight's agenda. Okay. Um, that's it. I, I would oh. like to comment on the mayor. I'm okay. out of the line. Go ahead. Uh, I've been here a long time, man. And three minutes sometimes I barely use it. But there may be times when I'd be willing to give my three minutes to another Alderman to spend more time talking because sometimes in a very, very important issue, I believe you need more than three. And I don't know anybody that really abuses the uh, three three minutes. Most of the time, one minute, two, but there becomes times when a, a person needs more time to express themselves and get all the facts out. And I sure would hate to limit the amount of time that an Oliver can speak, because he did, does speak for his constituents. I know we limit the uh, public to three minutes, but I think an Oliver, with, with the people we represent, Sure, if we had more than three minutes to talk, we get three minutes to the to the public. The alderman represented the whole board, and maybe times when he needs more time to speak. And I would hate to limit an alderman's uh, time that he can speak. I, I don't think that's very democratic. Alderman Cunningham. Um, uh, first, uh, the, the leaf cleaning. Um, I knew there was a new process. Uh, I noticed last year, and I kind of followed them around because I was just as curious as everyone else. However, in last year's process, I noticed um, in each ward, and I went to three different wards. My ward, obviously I do a lot of work in the sixth ward because my office is over there, and a lot in the, se in the second ward. And I noticed that last year they had about three trucks, three to four trucks, 
in the whole area, and they were on it. I mean, bam, 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 every street, every street, and it was efficient. Obviously, it was the first time they, they did it. Probably want to get a process together. Uh, and again, I'm not here to knock it. I'm just trying to find a better understand their process this year. Now, this year, I did the same thing. Um, I, I watched them, and specifically in my ward, I watched them go from Belvedere, south on uh, Belvedere, oh, I'm sorry, uh, correction, on the McAllister, from Belvedere south, made a right-hand turn at Helmholtz, another right-hand turn at Sunderland, another right-hand turn at George, back up to McAllister. I left the area. So I, I understand what that is all about. And then I came back, and that was the only street they did. So I called and says, hey, did something happen? Maybe trucks broke down. And understand that there was only one truck. And again, I don't know their process. Maybe they got a new process looking at it. So then I observed them. I was on North Avenue going uh, uh, obviously north, and I observed them again, and I watched them again. They hit another block. Then that truck left, and I think another truck came and hit another block, and then they left. So I'm really trying to get a better understanding of how that process is going. Uh, and, be, and the reason I'm bringing that to uh, the attention of us is because I got some calls from residents that says, hey, they went around the block, but they didn't come back all of them. And I was like, oh, I don't think so, because I'm used to long streets <laughs> and then the side streets, kind of the way uh, they do, the way we, our process in plowing, plowing the roads. They do the main drags, then the side streets. So I'm just trying to get a better understanding of that. And uh, I noticed Tom wasn't here tonight, but uh, I know Alderman Tempest had mentioned something last week. I guess I'm trying to poll and see if there's any other alderman kind of had that same problem in their area, or I should say a problem, that's the wrong word to use, that same process. If it is, is it working? That's all. And I just thought I would uh, point that out. Second, the, I was at the park uh, leaving my home on Saturday, and I noticed just a flood of young men and young ladies uh, at Roosevelt Park. Uh, if you haven't been over there, you really got to go. That's they, the park, Walking Park has done a great job over there. Uh, however, there was the Center for Conservation leadership staff and volunteers were over there. Um, about a third of them, young men and young ladies, are from Waukegan. Oftentimes, our young men and our young ladies do not get the accolades that they need when they do some great things. Here's an opportunity where young men and young ladies uh, back into their community, and two of them lived in the war, about the third of them lived throughout the city of Waukegan. I want to give uh, Greg Petrie, who's a mentor, not Greg, I'm sorry, Mike Trigg, who's a mentor of the, the Center for Conservation uh, Leadership, and the young men and young lady who were there, more particularly the Waukegan men and young ladies that, hey, thank you for coming out and, uh, and giving up your time on a Saturday. And it was real nice on Saturday so if, if you wasn't there, but I think they did an outstanding job. And I told them, it's very few young men and young ladies want to give up a nice Saturday, as warm as it is, to pull weeds. Uh, now, that might not be the, the exact term of some of those plants, but I, they look like weeds to me. That's what I'm going to call them. Uh, last but not least, I do want to wish everybody throughout the city of Waukegan, along with my family, happy Thanksgiving eat a lot of turkey, and don't worry about the weight coming on. Thank you. Oh, and, and to Mayor, staff, and my colleagues, happy Thanksgiving to you. Alderman Seeger. No comment. Alderman Moiseo. Yeah, I hope I won't be three minutes, but I usually am not, but I'll try. Uh, tonight, Tina gave us an overview of our financial situation, and we also let die an opportunity to purchase some land. We talk quite often about our tax rate, how high our tax rate is. Our tax rate is high because our assessed valuation is low. So we need a certain amount of money to run the city. So if your EAV goes down, your tax rate goes up. Well, how do you increase, how do you get your tax rate down? And how do you get your EAV up? You get your tax rate down by spreading the pain. You need more development. You need more people to pay taxes. 
Obviously, development is one way to do that. It's probably the one of the best ways. There's not a whole lot of places that I know of in Waukegan that have a potential for development. Now, we annexed the, the bridge development out there, the old Baxter Cardinal site. The other place is obviously the lakefront. The south lakefront, according to our plan, was always more ready to go than the north lakefront was to develop that, and while we were developing the South Lake front, hopefully we would get the north part cleaned up, and this land um, would increase in value, because now you had the South Lake front. Without the purchase of what we decided not to do today, I don't know how we're going to do that. I think we've just made it much more difficult to try to develop the South Lake front by not doing that. And I, again, I understand people's don't borrow any more money, I don't want my property taxes to go up. I understand that. And there's also some people, they don't give a damn about the lakefront. They live in Waukegan, they don't care about downtown, they don't care about the lakefront, all they care about is don't make my property taxes go up. I understand that argument. But the only way we can get the tax rate down is to get more development. We've always said the lakefront, the lakefront. I get tired of people to asking me, when are we going to do something on the lakefront? We had an opportunity, I hope it's not slipped away, to get a linchpin in the lakefront, and we didn't do it for various reasons. Some I don't know why. But we cannot get our tax rate down, cannot increase the value unless we get more development. And I, I just hope we did not make that damn near impossible now. Or I mean, we've, we've obviously stalled it. But that's just my opinion. But I get tired of people telling me, lifelong residents in Waukegan, when are you going to do something on the lakefront? When are you going to do something on the lakefront? Well, I don't know. I don't have an answer for him now. I don't have an answer. Thanks. Alderman Villalobos. I'll try to keep this a little brief, a little under the weather today. Um, I just want to make note about um, last week's Veterans Day Parade. Um, we had the fortune of good weather that day, and it was wonderful to see um, all the people in attendance at the, on the parade route as well at um, Memorial Plaza there, and to see our amazing JROTC um, representatives there, the youth, um, I'm, I'm a fond of, I'm a person who believes that um, the youth are important to talk to now, to instill in them the ideals and beliefs to make them strong citizens. And I think our JRTC program does a good job with that, and, and an excellent job, honestly. We have one of the lar we have the largest in the nation. Um, so I, I'm very hopeful, and I feel very strongly that um, our future Waukegan residents, or current, but our future for Waukegan is going to go well because um, we have strong leaders. We just recognized a few here today of our youth here that are coming up. Um, those are the people that are going to go forward into the world and they'll come back to Waukegan and help us out too. Um, secondly, I just want to say um, in advance, Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful time with your friends, family, and loved ones. And yeah, enjoy. Thanks so much. A uh, motion by Alderman Cunningham, second by Alderman Taylor to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The city of Waukegan is replacing about 20,000 water meters with a new automated meter, which provides for an accurate, timely, and reliable reading without having to gain access to customers' properties. The new meters, which will be replaced at no cost to the customers, will be able to identify high water usage and potential leaks. In addition, customers will be able to access their water usage and account information conveniently online. The first thing you need to do is schedule an appointment with Professional Meters, Inc. to have your old meter replaced with a new automated meter reader, AMR for short. Look for a postcard in the mail with the call information or call 866-270-9629. P.
PMI will arrive at your scheduled time to install your meter. They will arrive on a truck or a van with a PMI logo. The PMI installer will have on a shirt or a jacket with a PMI logo and will carry a PMI ID badge. Installers will also wear booties over their work boots to ensure they do not carry dirt, mud, or water into your home or business. The installation process should take less than 30 minutes. The installer will take a photo of the old meter to obtain a record of your final meter reading and the condition of the pipes and fittings. The next step is to turn off your shutoff valves located on your water meter line near the meter. Remove the old meter and install the new AMR meter. The transmitter, which transmits your water usage data to the city, will be placed on a convenient location near the meter. The installer will take a photo of the new meter once it's installed. And that's it. The PMI installer will make sure everything is cleaned up, collect his tools, and head on to the next installation. You may receive a follow-up visit from a PMI manager to ensure your satisfaction with the installation and to make a quality control check of the meter installation. For more information about the automated meter reading installation program, please visit www.waukeganil.gov. If you have any questions regarding the meter installation, contact PMI at 866-270-9629 or the City of Waukegan City Collector at 847-599-2997.